Me na I start to smile to say, and this is the program talk to the camera. Today we can are you building concerning the press briefing where the Ministry of Information and Communication can get every Thursday. Where they go to the conference room now, outside the conference that take place. It's the Deputy Minister of Information and Communication to take us through the update, and after that, she will introduce the discussants or speakers to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, Deputy Minister of Agriculture and oh. also the team from the Ministry of Labor. Good afternoon to you colleagues from the Fourth Estate. Welcome to today's uh, press conference. Today we intend to make it very short and to the point. So um, apologies for starting a bit late. We had other things going on so we couldn't start on time but thank you very much for your patience as always we start with the update for the week um, His Excellency Dr. Julius Madabio and delegates from Sierra Leone are in New York City to commemorate the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly scheduled for the 17th to the 30th of September 2019 the theme for this year's session is galvanizing multilateral effort for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. Addressing world leaders at the UN General Assembly during the Climate Change Summit 2019, hosted by the United Nations Secretary General, President Bio said that the impact of climate change is already being adversely felt by countries, especially those in the developing world. He stated that Sierra Leone, for example, is rated as the third most vulnerable country to the effects of climate change, noting that the threat to climate change is real and could be an impediment to achieving the sustainable development goals. He further highlighted actions taken by governments to address climate change. These include the setting up of early warning systems for climate resilience, establishing a national appropriate mitigation action plan with pipeline programs, among many others. In another engagement, President Bio held discussions on bilateral cooperation and progress in Africa and the African Union with President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi of Egypt. He further extended an invitation to his Egyptian counterpart to visit Sierra Leone as a sign of fostering the existing good relationship between the two countries adding that the visit will be a memorable and historic one because President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi will be the first Egyptian president to visit Sierra Leone. In his response, President el-Sisi accepted the invitation and affirmed his country's continued support to Sierra Leone. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Jul Dajalo on Wednesday launched the 2020 National Budget Policy Hearing at the Miata Conference Hall in Freetown. Speaking on the theme Fiscal Consolidation for Job Creation and Human Development Capital, the Vice President stated that the budget planning process links government policy to outcomes, with the budget hearing central to the budget development process and ultimately impacts on government's delivery of goods and services to the people. The process, he highlighted, provides an opportunity for MDAs to lay out policies and budget plans in helping the executive achieve economic growth and diversification, as well as it being a tool for fiscal consolidation for government's twin priorities of job creation and human capital development in achieving the country's national development plan. The Ministry of Political and Public Affairs in collaboration with the UNDP, Irish Aid, APRM and civil society organizations and other key stakeholders today commemorated International Democracy Day on the theme participation and commitment for democracy and peace so that's all we have for you for the update for this week um, in our midst this afternoon we have representatives of the ministry of agriculture led by the deputy minister of agriculture mr sam king Brimer. we also have um you know representatives from the ministry of labor um, as you're aware agriculture is arguably the largest economic um, sector in the country as nearly two-thirds of the population depend on it for livelihood and sustenance and it is a factor for almost all of the country's gross domestic product. 
Now the, the deputy minister is here with us this afternoon, and he's going to talk to us, give us, you know, an update on what's been going on in the ministry, where we are in our drive towards um, food self-sufficiency. So at this point, I'd like to invite Mr. Sam King Brimer, the deputy minister of agriculture, to please come up and make a statement. Deputy Minister of Information, thank you very much. Um, representative from um, the Ministry of Labor, um, members of the Florida State, and of course, um, um, other members of staff of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. A very good afternoon to you all. Um, I'm here to actually give an update on my ministry's activities over the last um, eight or eight months since my my last um, uh, press conf conference here a lot has been going on I would like to start with um, rehearsing what the ministry's broad mandate or what our strategic interventions as we set out in um, the details of the National Agricultural Transformation Program um, 2023, not 2023 for short. Um, we set out to um, make Sierra Leone rice self-sufficient, and we also set out to increase um, livelihood through investing in um, livestock production. Um, we set out to create high-value jobs um, using crop diversification, and also a fourth priority I set out in the. Um, NAT 2023 is to address is is to address um, climate and environmental concerns through um, biodiversity and forest management. Um, we will be um, a key player in the economic diversification. Um, few things that we've done and achieved um, over the last year. I run over a um, few. Um, of course, we completed the NAT, uh, the NAT 2023, which is the stra strategic um, directive set by the Ministry to achieve food self-sufficiency and food security. Closely aligned with that is we also um, completed the, um, the NIP, which is a key requirement by CADEP, which is Comprehensive African Agricultural Development Process. Um, uh, the NIP document is important because um, um, it sets the benchmark um, on which Sierra Leone is graded um, internationally by our peers and continental and regional benchmarks that we have to meet. Um, during the last um, biannual um, uh, review, review, we scored very bad, and um, I think we came um, second to last. Only did better than um, Liberia. We've worked very hard to uh, change that um, narrative. Hopefully, we'll make Sierra Leone proud, or we've started the process to make Sierra Leone proud at the next um, biannual review, which is going to be in Malabo, in, um, which is going to be, I think it's in Ethiopia, or Malabo, in um, um, January of 2020. So, all the things that we've done in the process of um, moving, uh, moving our culture to start playing, it starts taking a key role in uh, economic development is to mobilize resources both locally and internationally. Um, from our development partners, we've been very active, uh, but I'll start from the private sector wing. I think it is no um, secret by now that um, we are aware of the momentous signing of a project, uh, a, a contract with um, the Sala FS Group, which has won the right to um, develop, irrigate, produce, process, and make available to um, Sierra Leone 55, uh, 54,000 hectares of riverine line ecology uh, um, in the Bonf and Tumambun, Bonf and um, Pujong districts. Um, if for those who've been following the Tumambun project for a long time, you will know that um, you will notice that we've moved from 110,000 hectares to 54,000 hectares. That is very deliberate. Um, we see um, the separation or, or, or the, the um, breaking down of, of the area into plots for various interested parties to take um, portions that they can easily um, develop 
as the best way for um, our country. So, Salah FS Group, let me make a quick correction um, because um, a lot of our colleagues in the media actually reported this news um, spelling Salah as S A L A. The correct spelling is C A G L A F S Group. Salah FS Group. So, um, they are um, the main group that will be operating 54,000 hectares. Um, the balance 56,000 or more hectares will be um, distributed to other investors on the merits of the, the proposals and also on the strength of what they'll be doing in, in the near possible period of time. Uh, more information on the contract, it's, it's, it's going to be worth around um, $275 million. Um, dollars. Um, <coughs> actually, we also um, changed the intervention a little bit the initial discussions that we held with um, Salah will have committed government $100 million. We've removed the element of $100 million. So government is actually um, not compelled to come up with anything or, or not required to come up with anything um, st and specifically for this project. But government has also mobilized um, $30 million from the Exim Bank of India. And, um, that are, that are, um, um, agreement, a contract will be signed, um, um, I think, October 9th by the Ministry of um, Finance. And the $30 million will be used along the whole 110,000 um, land available for agriculture, purposely, purposely for um, <coughs> flood mitigation purposes. Um, it will serve to prevent flooding. Um, along the whole 110,000 land as much as possible. So the 30 million is not going to be used for Salah exclusively. That is why I'm saying um, authoritatively that um, the government is not, uh, will not be committed any, uh, any amount towards this um, 54,000 hectares production that is signed, contract that is signed with Salah FS Group. In, la la in, in line with um, um, foreign um, development um, investment that we are attracting, um, but all closely related to that, we've been working very hard with our development partners. And I want to report that um, finally, um, the IFAD uh, project, which is actually an agricultural value chain project, that in total will, work, will be worth over $80 million, is in hard gears. Hard gears. Um, they are currently recruiting, the recruitment process is ongoing. And for fairness to all Australians across the country, and even out of the country, we contracted um, a, a recruitment firm to actually do a lot of the work so as to give everybody in all Australians equal chance of being, um, equal chance of being hired. So Australians across the world are also uh, were encouraged to apply. Some went um, um, through the interview using uh, video conferencing or Skype um, to, to conduct the interview. So it is ongoing. We will be com we'll be finishing the process in the next few weeks, and this project is is expected to to start um, substantive work um, next month. Closely um, in line with um, monitoring um, funding from our international uh, development partners, we've also signed a thirty five million dollars contract with the Islamic Development Bank for another rice. Um, a regional rice value chain project. Um, this project, I must, um, I must submit to you all, um, will be targeting um, 5,000, uh, amongst others, 5,000 um, 5, farmers, each 5,000 rice farmers, each um, with five hectares um, to be cultivated. So in short, just the Islamic Development Bank project will 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 um, benefit the country um, by pro by producing 25,000 hectares and this time we are actually um, um, will actually be dealing with smallholders and smallholders but building the capacity to the 0 0.5 um, hect hectares per, per farmer to now five hectares per farmer so you realize that from the 25,000 hectares that will be produced or be brought um, on a productive activity by the Islamic Development Bank. All things being equal, 
we could produce in excess of 150 metric um, 150,000 metric tons, all things being equal. That is, as part of what we are also doing, we are encouraging multiple crop, multiple crop and cycle in a year. Closely related to uh, our, our, our uh, funds or resources mobilization drive, um, the ministry has also signed another contract with the African Development, ba African Development Bank. It is a $12 million project. We've also started the recruitment process for this project. Um, the recruitment process for the Islamic Development Bank is um, team, the project team is also underway. So in short, uh, we have mobilized close to $150 million in project financing uh, over the next few years. That should start sometime this year. Um, supporting production is part of our annual activity. And in, 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 in that um, regard, we've distributed 600,000 metric tons of high yielding seeds to farmers across the country. We've also, um, in line with what His Excellency and other world leaders are doing right now at the UN General Assembly, um, support of climate change. We are very aware of the um, forest degradation in our country. So we've taken a proactive role in that regard by um, organizing a community reforest reforestation drive across the country. Um, this will not only address um, climate and environmental concerns, but it will also bring jobs and bring income to our people. But not people in Freetown or in urban communities, but at, I mean, in the rural communities at community level. The, the, the plan of the community reforestation exercise this year is different. We are trying to projectize this by having the private sector take the lead. The Ministry of Agriculture will we'll, we'll, we'll maintain supervision and monitoring exercise. <coughs> we will also maintain nursery, the nursery part, nursery part of, to provide quality seeds and planting materials for uh, the, the tree planting exercise. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to inform you that um, the interest in the community um, reforestation was really high. And the last call for proposal attracted about 151 applicants. Um, the process was rigorous and 74 applicants were approved. Um, they've been moved to um, NPPA to complete the process of vetting um, the award of contracts through the successful applicants. This will create over 1,400 jobs at both rural communities and at various um, district level. Uh, the, the 74 applicants are evenly or somehow distributed across the country, with no district receiving less than four applicants, or four successful applicants. Um, we noticed from very early on that um, we could do all what we want to do to change our culture, to make our culture transformative. If we don't address the area of, of governance, we'll be wasting our time. So in that regard as well, we've completed um, a cocoa policy a cashew policy and um, coffee policy with the help of um, the European Union supported um, project um, called Boosting Our Culture and Food Security, BAPS. These, these policies are not only, will not only be helpful in terms, of governing, uh, in terms of governance, but they are benchmarks set by EU and World Bank for continued budgetary support in agriculture and some other sectors. As part of the innovative uh, uh, approach in developing agriculture as well, we've launched um, the Agriculture Marketing Information System, supported by World Bank Project. This information, information system will make prices across the country widely available and for producers across the country to match their produce with areas of need across the country. So um, a farmer, a farmer in Bwajibu, for example, body will come to mind easily because that's where I come from. Um, can easily um, say I have um, 10,000 bushels of rice. Rice is sold at this cost across this country. I'll be able to move my rice to for easy access. 
Um, we've also worked with um, uh, with one of our other projects, the Ready Safe project, in line with the Ministry of Health, and we've developed the vet a veterinary epidemiology and surveillance unit in um, in um, Teco. I'm at Teco um, lab. This lab will help will be the front line for not only um, testing outbreaks, but also working and training um, private um, to our phone. We uh, will only address areas of animal health uh, when there is outbreak. You want to have frontline staff that will address not only the outbreak, but the training that goes with the livestock sector. So uh, I, I've mentioned the um, mobilization of 30 million for the agro processing or uh, agro development zone in the Tomabun area. Um, this is really, really important because Tomabun is not only, is not, will not only be housing um, uh, development financing projects, but it will also be housing um, um, private sector investments as well. Closely in line with what we are, also, what we are doing, We've, we've counted on His Excellency's support um, to drive our initiatives and our transformation further. And he's um, consented in, uh, um, to all our requests. That is why um, one of his pronouncements to insist that um, political appointees should own and manage the farms. So what we've done, we've completed the requirements and the guidelines for this. We will be distributing. Some some might have re received the guidelines. The last page of the guidelines has a registration form. The registration form will be collected and housed in a database that we will verify farms owned by political appointees and submit the names to His Excellency to measure compliance to his pronouncements. Um, in in summary, I mean, and um, to conclude. I would like to, um, because this is also very important for continue uh, our work going forward, this presents one of the best opportunity of interministerial collaboration and partnership that the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry has, partner, has partnered with the uh, Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of uh, Youth Affairs to engage in the production of 170,000 70, hectares of or rice production over the next three years. In effect, what we're trying to do without any other intervention or assistance from any other partner, if well done, the 170 hectares put on a production will average over 350, as a matter of fact, it will average um, over 520,000 metric tons of paddy rice. And that will result into, after processing, Closely, I mean, uh, around 310,000 uh, metric tons of, of processed rice. So the drive here is, if all else fail, the Ministry of Agriculture, in partnership with the military, and with the military, and the Ministry of Youth, should be able to address the gap in production that we have currently, which stands at 300,000 metric tons. So the Ministry of Finance. Which uh, who, uh, who is actually taking the leadership in, 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 in bringing this partnership together will will provide the, the funding funding requirements to to produce uh, or to uh, develop cultivate and pr um, produce rice on 170,000 uh, 170,000 hectares. Um, we want this to be a three years approach, looking at the current capacity in the ministry of um, Youth and Sport, Ministry of Youth Affairs, we will introduce theirs gradually. They will have 150,000 hectares, 50,000 hectares every year, incrementally by another 50,000 hectares. Whereas the military, because of organization and discipline, will actually do, do their 20,000 hectares in two years. 10,000 hectares in the first year, and another 10,000 hectares in the second year. Uh, we've seen this as an approach that, that will actually address our food security in the absence of n uh, intervention from nowhere else. So uh, uh, this is going to be inbuilt in our budget. That is why our budget process, the budget hearing that we started yesterday, um, is a really good process. And we encourage the Ministry of, of Finance 
to, at least for 2020, not only make fabulous um, allocations, but come good in terms of timely disbursements. I repeat, timely disbursements. Agriculture is time bound. It serves no good to government and to the ministry and the people of Sierra Leone to give the Ministry of Agriculture amounts due January for us to receive the money in September. That would be that would just leave um, challenges or our programs and activities unattended. So our colleagues in the Ministry of Finance have actually um, um, uh, committed and promised us that um, come 2020 they will not only meet um, timely disbursement, they will sort of um, uh, provide in advance sort of um, our, our, our budget requirement for quarter one. They will pre-finance quarter one and quarter two. Hopefully that comes good, then we will surely and easily assure the people of Sierra Leone that within the next few years, food security will be assured. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um so, uh, Sam King Bama. so we quickly go to the other item on the agenda, which is on the 1st of October 2019, Sierra Leone will join UN member states to observe International Day for the Aged. The theme for this year is the journey of age equality. The 2019 theme aims to draw attention to the existence of old age inequalities and how this often results from accumulation of disadvantages throughout life and highlight intergenerational risks of increased old age inequalities. Bring awareness to the urgency of coping with existing and preventing future old age inequalities. Explore societal and structural changes in view of life course policies, lifelong learning, proactive and, adap and adaptive labor policies, social protection and universal health coverage. Reflect on best practices, lessons and progress of the journey to ending older age inequalities and changing negative narratives and stereotypes involving old age. In 2004, His Excellency, the late President Dr. Ahmad Tijan Kaba launched the National Social Safety Net under the Ministry of Labor and Social Security to provide cash transfer to identified vulnerable age, aged people, 60 years and above, who without means, who are without sorry means of livelihood or welfare support. Today here this afternoon we have Mr. Thomas Kamara. He is the regional coordinator, West for the National Social Safety Net Program in the Ministry of Labour, and he will tell us a bit more. <coughs> Um, good afternoon to you all once more. Um, as it was introduced by the Honorable Deputy Minister of Information, um, I'm here this afternoon actually to talk on the celebration of National Aging of World Aged Day, which will actually take place on the 1st of October 2019, which follow on Tuesday. But I think what will actually play in the minds of many here is that why the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Um, <coughs> as the introduction goes actually, um, I would actually to want to make something clear here how the celebration came about. Right. Um, on December 14, 1990, the United Nations General Assembly voted to establish October 1st as the International Day of Older Persons, as recorded in Resolution 45106. The holiday is celebrated by raising awareness about issues affecting the elderly. Um, for this year's still, it's the journey to age equality. As you all know, um, most people are very much concerned and why they actually came up with this thing, it is in line. It is in line with, with 2030 agenda and the sustainable, sustainable development goals. I recognize that development will only 
be achievable if it is inclusive of all ages, empowering older persons in all dimensions of development, including preparing, promoting their active participation in the social, economic, and political lives is one way to ensure their inclusiveness and reduce inequality. You and I know what actually the elderly people are going through. But what is important here today is that the government of Sierra Leone, as was introduced, that um, since the establishment of NASIT, which actually caters only for workers, um, the late president, Dr. Ahmed Tijankaba, thought it fit that that one is not enough. If you cater for those who are working today, then tomorrow at least they will have, I mean, a very dignified old age. What about those before the establishment of NASIT who have served one way or the other to ensure the development of this country? Should, should they be left out? They said no. They are the establishment of national social safety net under the Ministry of Labor and Social Security mm -hmm. came into being. And it was done in 2004. Uh, also, some of you here will want to know, as I was saying, why the Ministry of Labor and Social Security? As it is now, the Ministry of Labor is providing supervisory role to NASIT because the ministry is dealing with social security issues. Th this is the reason why the National Social Safety Net was anchored in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. But again, the reason behind it was that um, you all know United Nations 2002 under the Madrid International Plan of, Plan of Aging, and also the AU Charter, the call mm -hmm. on Sierra Leone as a country that is part of the global world to actually be part of the fight against ageism. And um, what the, the, the National Social Safety Net under the Ministry of Labor has been doing over the years is to give cash to vulnerable aged. Just underline the word they are vulnerable. As it is now, Sahara is underdeveloped. But just because our leaders they are very much actually ready to see that the lives of their people are actually maintained in a manner which at least they will live in a very dignified situation. Um, 2004, when the scheme was established, the 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 ministry under the national social safety net will be giving cash transfer to the vulnerable aged. It was just about hundred thousand leos at that time. It continued after the demise of the SLB government at that time. The APC came. They continued, but as you know, we all know the passion the late president had for the establishment of this scheme. So, at least over the years, during the tenure of the past regime, the scheme has been starving. Right? But what is good about the whole thing here is that after His Excellency, the president, retired Dr. Gilos Mada Bio, took over a race of governance through our indefatigable Minister of Labor and Social Security, Ade Kuleki, he said this scheme was established and it was not done by any mistake. We need to actually strengthen the scheme and see that we save the lives of the aged in this country. So what, what, what he did, but the problem actually the, the scheme was facing is that it was 100% funded by the government of Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. 
100% funded by the government of the Republic of Sierra Leone. But again, in as much as they want to actually see that issues of elderly people are actually addressed, they said, now, what we'll try to do is that this is our baby. Thank God, it's still existing. So we'll continue right from there. So what they did, as we speak now, the vulnerable aged are receiving 150,000. So it has been increased from 100,000 to 150,000. And one good thing also, our area of coverage, it is nationwide. As recent as two months back, we just concluded payments from Falaba District, Kabala District, mm -hmm. Karina District, Kenema District, Pujong District, Bont District. And as, as, as I speak now, we are only waiting for the next quarter to available so that we we'll continue the cash transfer. But what is also important here is that um, under the regime of the new direction, you know, all these things that we are doing, we need actually to guarantee the lives of elderly people by doing what? Formulating a national aging policy. That's what we are doing now. As we speak now, at any moment from now, that policy will be launched by no less a person but His Excellency, the President. And the formulation of that policy is in line with the Madrid International Plan of Action on Aging and the AU Charter. So, Sayun, we should be proud that at least among the few countries in Africa, Salim is now developing a national aging policy. And again, lest <coughs> I forget, because a good number of you here mm -hmm. you may tend to actually misunderstand what safety net, National Association of Safety Net in Ministry of Labor is doing, and to that of NASIT. As I was saying, NASIT is purely contributory. Purely contributory. This one is non contributory. Right? And you find out that there are a lot of challenges because funding is always the problem. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, thankfully, we've seen a lot of, I mean, efforts made by this government and we want to continue with that. We want to continue with that. As we speak now, um, a national social protection policy is also, develop is also developed. Well, that one actually encompasses all other ministries' mm -hmm. social protection activities. And that national social protection policy also will be tabled in Parliament by no less a person, by our Honorable Minister of Labor and Social Security. So, what we are now developing as a national aging policy will actually go a long way to complement government's efforts in addressing issues of older people. So, align with the celebration, um, the reason why we are here, we believe that what we need now is to actually create awareness. Issues of older people are very important issues, but sometimes we pay less attention to them. But it's good that we start to give premium to that, because Today, we are here discussing about people who are aged. Tomorrow, you and I will also fall under the same category. So it's high time that we try to lay the foundation now that will actually help us tomorrow. So far, so good. Without much ado, I think this is the...
As soon as I listen, so waiting the Deputy Minister of Information and Communication, when our Madam Mamadi Gobe Kamara don't talk about government activities. And also inside the press briefing today, we be get the Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Forestry, where he can talk about waiting and they put in place for improved agriculture in the country. Me wake up with this program to na today. Me your name na Isa to smile to say. Until we meet again to another press briefing where the Ministry of Information and Communication go call. I say, tata.